Today we are going to be talking about the man from Earth. The movie begins with Professor John Oldman packing his belongings onto his truck preparing to move to a new home. His colleagues show up to give him an unexpected farewell party, Harry, a biologist, Edith, a fellow professor and devout Christian, Dan, an anthropologist, and Sandy, a historian who is in love with John. As they are walking into the house, Edith spots an unknown Van Gogh painting of John's with a note to my friend, Jacques Bourne on the back written in French. Once inside, his friends persistently ask John why he is leaving. Another friend, Art Jenkins, an archaeologist, and his student Linda Murphy, arrive and John's friends continue to pressure him for the reason for his departure. John poses the question, what if a man for the Upper Paleolithic survived until the present day? They assume that John is working on a science fiction story and play along with the discussion. As the film progresses, John slowly reveals that he is the caveman under discussion when he mentions that he was given a chance to sail with Christopher Columbus in the 15th century. The revelation starts off with John's recollection of the terrain of prehistoric Earth and John's origins, which happens to be roughly 14,000 years ago. John reveals that he was one shockborn, a friend of Van Gogh's, and he is now moving on since some people have noticed his lack of aging. As they take a break from the discussion, Art, who is concerned about John's sanity, telephones another friend, Dr. Will Gruber, an elderly psychologist, explains the odd situation and asks him to come over right away. In the meantime, Sandy confesses to John that she loves him, but John tells her they can never be together because of his immortality. John resumes his story by stating that he was once a Sumerian for 2,000 years, then a Babylonian under Hammurabi, and finally a disciple of Gotama Buddha. Dr. Gruber arrives, at which point Dan mentions that John's tale is as impossible to be disproved as it is to be verified, a response to the many attempts to poke holes in John's story by his colleagues. The discussion takes a turn into the biological and physical condition of John and then the topic of death. Gruber propels the discussion deeper into the topic of death and tension rises as Gruber interrogates John on that subject. The tension culminates with Gruber pointing a gun at John. After the drama ends with the departure of Gruber, Harry reveals that Gruber's wife has passed away the day before and the profession of John's immortality had hit Gruber very hard. Art and Edith are upset with John's story, while Harry, Dan, Sandy, and Linda appear to be more sympathetic. John also mentions that he is not a follower of a particular religion, and he doesn't believe in an omnipotent God. John's audience is shocked when he reveals how he survived the crucifixion when he was Jesus by blocking the pain, a technique he learned in India. He explains the origin of the resurrection, Moses, and other events and people in the Bible. Tempers and emotions rise as Edith pressures John to recant his story, which offends her deep-rooted faith in the Bible. Dr. Gruber returns to the scene and apologizes to John for his infantile behavior. As John continues to pack his belongings onto the truck, his colleagues begin to talk about the possibility of John being mentally ill or high on drugs. The discussions of John being Jesus, Christianity, and the Bible continue and Edith, unable to take John's tale anymore, breaks down crying. Emotions in the room run high. Gruber takes charge of the situation and sternly demands that John end his high tale and give closure to the story he threatens John with the possibility of locking him up for observation. John apologizes to everyone and, as he doesn't want to further upset any of his friends, he tells them that all he just told them is just a story. As each of John's friends leave, John apologizes to Harry and Edith, while Art and Linda leave without many parting words. When it is Dan's turn to say goodbye, it is hinted that Dan believes John's story. After everyone but Dr. Gruber and Sandy has left, Dr. Gruber overhears John relating to Sandy some of the other pseudonyms he has used over the years. One used over 60 years ago was the name of Gruber's father, a chemistry professor from Harvard, who had left the family. Gruber, shocked and overexcited, suffers a heart attack and dies. After Gruber's body is taken away, the movie ends with Sandy walking towards John, sitting in his truck, at the last minute he changes his mind to spend some part of his life with her. The man from Earth is a thought provoker and leads us to question our beliefs and wonder if we can really know anything for sure. The main character in the movie is Professor John Oldman who leads his fellow colleagues in an interesting tale which starts with prehistoric man and leads through the history of modern man. But what is most interesting and controversial is that he lived though at all, or so he claims. This is, according to John, due to a quirk in his immune system that produces perfect cells, and the theory of him living outside of time. However, none of his friends can refute his claims. They have to take him at his word, and his explanations do appear to be quite believable. So believable that it shakes some of the characters to tears. When it comes to the topic of religion John claims to be Jesus and merely taught Buddhist teachings of universal brotherhood, kindness, tolerance and love to the people of Judea. 
The main theme of this movie is an epistemological question. Can we know for sure? How can we disprove John's claims? His answers are convincing. They are not irrational, and it is possible they could happen given the truth of John's explanations. Merely look at the teachings of Buddha and that of Jesus. They are strikingly similar aren't they? I cannot disprove John, so I would have to, like the others, take him at his word. Why would an educated college professor lie to his colleagues and friends? Especially claims that are as outrageous as John's, unless of course it was an intellectual philosophical experiment. But the end of the movie leads us to believe that is not the case. Bringing us to the end of the movie. Comment below what you think. If you haven't already like and subscribe.